Hey, Luke here with catsandcarp.com, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about what catfish eat. We're gonna talk about their natural prey sources for all the different species of catfish. We're gonna talk about what baits to use and how they their eating behaviors change as they age. But not only that, we're gonna actually catch some catfish while we talk about it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a little talking head in my, my basement. I'm gonna go out in the water here and we're gonna talk about catfish while we catch catfish. But that's not all. I bought myself this boroscope. This is a tiny little camera with some LED lights on a wire and it's meant for shoving down drain pipes and checking for clogs. But you can also pretty gently put this down the throat of a catfish and we're gonna get to see what's in their stomachs. And it sends a Wi-Fi signal to my phone here. And so I can see on my phone and what's down in the catfish's stomach and I can record it. So uh, check this out. This is gonna be a little crazy. <laughs> well, enough talk. Let's go get set up, start fishing, and I'm gonna tell you all about what catfish eat. <laughs> it's the middle of February and it has been very cold recently. We had thick ice on the river until about three days ago when some warm rain came in and it's caused flood conditions, but it's also popped up the water temperature to the low 40s. Uh, so a lot of change, and uh, we're gonna just see what, what the fish are doing and where they're at. I've got some ideas where to look for them though. Well, today we're gonna use one of my absolute favorite baits, gizzard shad. Uh, I got a bag of frozen shad here. Uh, they're just left over from other trips. You know, if I don't use up all my shad, I'll put them in the freezer and save them. And then on a day like today where Frankly, I just don't have a lot of time to go catch my own bait. I can go and use some frozen shad. See there, there's a fish right in there. Fish right in there. There you go, half a frozen shad right there. Perfect catfish bait. Well, I decided to try a spot I've never tried before. Chucked out the rods and uh, we're gonna give it 15 minutes and see if something bites. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what catfish eat. One of the biggest myths around catfish is that they're these simple bottom dwellers that sit around eating stinky dead things. While all of those things can be true, it's a gross oversimplification about what catfish eat. Catfish are predators and they're omnivores. So they eat both meat and they eat plants and they hunt their food as well. Catfish will really eat anything they can fit in their mouth. They can't take bites out of things, so they have to swallow it whole. But if a catfish can swallow it whole and they can digest it, odds are they're gonna eat it. You can find some really weird things in the belly of catfish. Uh, water snakes is pretty common. In the springtime, they eat a lot of baby turtles. Uh, but you'll see baby ducks, baby muskrats, um, and even somebody sent me some pictures of an armadillo that a catfish had, had swallowed and killed. Um, catfish are also notorious for being greedy little pigs. They will I'll just try to eat anything they can fit in their mouth, whether they can swallow it or not. So you'll see catfish with uh, other catfish sticking out of their mouth or, you know, fish way too big for them sticking out of their mouth. Um, they're a very aggressive predator, and if they can get their, their mouth around something, they will hit it. But there are patterns to what they choose to eat. When catfish start out young, they, they, they're, anything goes. I mean, insects, uh, snails, uh, a lot of vegetation like seaweed and, and uh, uh, coontail and things like that, they'll, they'll eat it. Uh, but as they get older, they tend to focus on high protein and bait fish, you know, gizzard shad, moon eye, bluegill, suckers, things like that. Oh, and uh, they love shad. Oh, that feels decent. Kind of putting up a funky fight. Let's see what we got. Look at that, that's not fair. That guy just vomited. All right. Okay, I call foul on this guy because I was really excited to shove that boroscope down his throat, see what's in his stomach. He puked up right as he come to the boat. I saw a big shad, a whole shad, uh, sticking out of his, his mouth, the tail end sticking out. And as I got him to the, to the side of the boat, 
he vomited up. And I know it wasn't my bait because it was an entire shad and I was using a cut up piece of shad. So uh, let's see, there might be some other stuff in his, his stomach though. Let's, let's see what he's eating. Look at the size of this sucker. And look, look how he's all covered in mud right there. He's been buried down in the mud for a while. And he's come out for after that cold spell and is hunting, hunting shad. Took me a little while to get the hook out of him. So I'm gonna put him in the keep net and uh, just let him rest and, and rehydrate. And then we're gonna go see what's in his stomach. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. There's another one. Oh. You can hear that alarm going off? That's my 15 minute alarm. If I don't get a bite in 15 minutes, I move spots. So that was, would have been me moving had I not just caught two fish. I use the 15 minute alarm, especially when I'm fishing in the winter time, because in the summer, the catfish go out and hunt for their food, okay? And they move around a lot. So you can sit in one spot and wait for the fish to come to you. In the winter time, they're much more lethargic and stationary. So if you don't come to them, you're not gonna find them. So you put out your baits, wait 15 minutes. If you don't get a bite, you try us in another spot. You don't stay stationary waiting for the fish to come to you in the winter time. Well guys, well I'm excited. Let's go see what's in this guy's belly, all right? <laughs> okay, that totally slimed my boroscope and he just vomited a bunch of stuff. <laughs> just puked up a bunch of liquid. So this guy's been a really good sport. We're going to let him go. <laughs> well, that was a little disappointing. Uh, the boroscope really was useless once it got in the stomach because it got covered in goo and then you couldn't see. It was just the lens was all slimed up. Uh, and, and I was fishing around in there and the, and the catfish burped and, and puked up a little bit and there was just like some, some liquid, you know, it looked like he'd been eating top ramen soup or something like that. But uh, I have had a couple opportunities to actually see what's inside a catfish's stomach when, I, when I'm cleaning them. And a little while ago I did uh, a catfish catch and cook video and when I opened up the catfish he had just tons of shad in there. Um, he had like I think three shad partially digested in his stomach, which tells you how greedy these catfish can be. They just will eat and eat until their stomachs are bulging. All right, well, I've been talking at the camera a whole bunch. I need to get rebated and get cast out there again because you know, I want to get some more fish. Uh oh, look at this one. This line is pointing off in a weird direction. Oh, yeah. Got to watch it in the winter time. The fish takes can be kind of gentle. Oh, oh, he just popped off. Well, I was talking at the camera. Got uh, one on that I lost, and then something else grabbed that and took my bait. So I got to focus a little bit better. All right, that fish in the keep nets had a while to rest. I'm going to pull him out and see if the boroscope does any better on him. All right. Oh, he is a healthy fish. There's a shad tail sticking out of his throat. So this guy had one shad he puked up already, another shad sticking out of his throat, and how many more shad are in this ginormous belly? And he was eating my bait at that. So this guy had just absolutely full belly full of shad, and he's still eating. That's crazy. All right, let's get him back in. You know, it's important to understand that catfish are omnivores because as catfishermen, we tend to get hung up on thinking that we've got to use fish or got to use stink baits or chicken livers or something stinky and nasty. And, and it, 
that's not true at all. Remember, catfish are omnivores, and channel catfish and smaller blue catfish, most of their diet in some places is seaweed and plant material. So you can go out with corn, mashed potatoes, uh, bread, and absolutely crush it on the catfish. Um, and I've got many, many videos where I've done this. And a matter of fact, my, my best channel catfish ever, my 23 pound, pound channel catfish, was caught on a single kernel of corn and jello flavored uh, breadcrumbs. I've caught so many catfish on that bait, I, I can't even begin to tell you. And the reason why is catfish are omnivores and there's some plant material that they really dig. And so this can be helpful for uh, finding alternative baits and alternative ways to fish a particular area, especially if you're in one of these states where you can't use bluegill or you don't have access to shad and you want a really good bait. Um, look at mashed potatoes, corn, uh, breadcrumbs, things like that can be really effective. I got lots of videos about how that works. I'll put some uh, links in the description as well. It's also important to understand how different species of catfish have different eating habits and how catfish's eating habits change as they grow up. So if you want to catch a bunch of, uh, you know, five, six pound blue catfish and channel catfish, corn's awesome. But you don't catch that many 50 pound blue catfish on corn, to be honest. Uh, but you look at everyone who, who catches trophy blue catfish and almost to a man, they use bait fish, fresh cut bait fish, uh, shad, moon eye, skip jack, bluegill, things like that. And a lot of people think the stinkier the better. And uh, most of the guys I talk to in my experience has been that it's the opposite, the fresher the better. You see right here, he's just kind of messing with it, messing with it a little bit. That's pretty common in the winter time because they're so lethargic. Now he's getting serious. Oh, pop off. I had a big chunk of bait on this. I want a big blue catfish. In certain areas, crawfish are a major part of catfish's diet. Other places, it's frogs. Certain times of the year, it's baby turtles. Um, other times, it's herring or shad. You know, there's a time and a season and a location for each, each type of food. And so you've got to know what type of food is really abundant in your area and what the catfish are used to eating. And matching that is often the best way to catch catfish. Look at that right there. Round here, shad. And shad are the primary forage, and so that's what I'm using. But bluegill are also a main part of their diet, and baby carp, suckers, um, eel sometimes. So there's a lot of different options. One type of catfish food we don't see a lot in my area is freshwater mussels and clams and snails. Uh, that is a major part of catfish's diet, especially blue catfish. Often on big rivers, you'll find the blue catfish over mussel beds. And places where there's large colonies of freshwater mussels, you'll see blue catfish because they like to suck those up and crush them and eat them. It's also a great bait. Uh, you can go take a little rake or a shovel in the, in the mud of a river or a lake and dig up all these freshwater snails and clams and mussels and crush them, take the shells off and use them for bait. And it's a great technique. That right there is a classic channel catfish bite. They kind of monkey with it and play with it a little bit. It's because I'm using really big baits and they have uh, comparatively smaller mouths. And so it takes a little bit more uh, manhandling for them to actually take the hook properly. There we go. These catfish will eat all year long. As long as there's food available, they'll eat it. There we go. Well, I can tell this one's just a hair over eight pounds because right around eight pounds is when I can't pick them up with one hand. <laughs> Look at that beast. Beautiful. Well, I got my bait back and it's kind of crushed. And that's the thing, catfish teeth are meant for gripping, not cutting. Catfish don't take a bite out of your bait. They will scuff it up, they'll crush it, they'll mush it up, but they won't cut it. Um, if you get a lot of hits and you come back and there's holes missing out of your bait, it's probably a snapping turtle, uh, not a catfish. Flathead catfish are probably the most predatory of all of the, the catfish. Uh, I tend to catch the fewest number of flatheads on vegetable-based baits. Um, I have caught a 53-pound flathead on a small carp bait called a mulberry-flavored boilie, but 
that was kind of the exception, not the rule. Uh, uh, flatheads tend to really like live bait, and you can catch them on cut bait at certain times of the year in certain places, but live bait works best for flatheads. So you'll tend to see that, you know, oh, the, each species is a little bit different. All right, one last catfish, then we gotta call it. Oh, look at this one. Look at this, he's got, he's got some sores on him right there. He's got some sore, that's like a fin rot. I don't think that's from something biting him. I think that's fin rot, that's actually a, a fungus. And he's got some right there too. There we go. Nice fish, but it'll have to be the last one. I promised Becca I'd get home at a reasonable time. I better call this a day, but hopefully you guys found this informative and, and entertaining. If you like this video, don't forget to check out many of our other great videos. We have entire playlists of just how to catch catfish and videos about catfish. If you want to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.